Hi, this is Pastor Bill, and I wanted to thank you for watching our Church Unlimited YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and check out churchunlimited.com while you're at it. And if you're anywhere near one of our campuses, come check us out this weekend. Thanks for watching. So great to have you guys here. I want to say hello to all of our campuses. Thanks for joining us for such a special occasion today here on Mother's Day. We want to celebrate you, Mom. So right now, across all of our campuses, will all the moms please stand to your feet so we can honor you. All moms. Come on, Mom. Stand up so we can honor you. You're amazing. You're beautiful. We're so grateful for you. So thankful for each one of you. Thank you, Mom. You're incredible. We still need you to cook this afternoon. Thanks so much. We appreciate that. So. so glad you guys are here. We hope that you guys do have a great day today. And we do want to honor you. And it's really fun. I, last night, my mom was here. And, and uh, I got just to take a moment to honor her. I mean, the poor woman, she's put up with me for 45 years. You can only imagine the pain. So I uh, just wanted to honor her. And of course, my wife will be here next service. Can't wait to do that, to honor her as well, because she has to raise my DNA. And that's not easy. And so... <laughs> That's a challenge. And so it is so great, though, to have you guys here just to celebrate with you and to celebrate you, Mom, and all that you mean to us. We are so very grateful for you. Hey, let's say our mission statement together as a church. What are we here to do as a church? We're here to take as many people to heaven as we can before we die, period. That's what we're all about here at Church Unlimited. Well, we're going to start this off, and so I figure let's go ahead and start off with a few tears. Check out this video. I know, we should have had Kleenex and all the seats. I know, I get it. You know, I'm glad you guys all think that's super sweet. That's a sign that you've either not entered the teenage years yet or you're way, way out of them and you've forgotten. <laughs> but I'm in the teenage years, so this is what my parenting looks like right now. I just want to show this real quick. This is from Instagram. So this is actually what my parenting looks like. That's other people's kids, <laughs> and there's my kids. How many guys from like what I'm talking about? We're raising boys in my home. And here's the thing. When I say boys, I have three boys. Actually, I have two boys that are quickly turning the third, the, the girl into a boy. You know what I'm talking about? Like, that's what happens when your first two are boys. They treat her like the third boy. And so she's tough as nails, of course. And so she's adopted from Russia, which means she's already tough. Like, so just add that to the equation. We always say, man, Vladimir Putin, your grandfather must be so proud of you, Sophie. Because she's very tough. Anyways, but I mean, so it's like they're, they're always wrestling and they're, they're rough and they're tough. And now that they're teenage boys, they're like dirty all the time. Mom, you know what I'm talking about, right? They're always dirty. And then on top of that, they're physically dirty, but they're also their minds are very dirty too because they're teenage boys. <laughs> so my wife, here's the thing, my wife didn't realize this. And so she grew up with a sister, no brothers. And then all of her cousins were all girls. So she had no boy experience whatsoever. And so even when we first got married, she was like, I had no idea you guys were so disgusting and perverted. I'm like, and I'm a pastor. Imagine just the average guy, honey. <laughs> so needless to say, we've broken her in, but uh, it's true. <laughs> My wife had no idea how disgusting boys were, but now we have a lot of them in our home. And so it's just, that's the way it is. And so, yeah, so that's our home with boys. And so it's a lot of fun though. And we absolutely love our kids and it is fun. And the one thing I can say about the Cornelius home is it's fun and crazy. I mean, it's, it's very loud. And is anyone else's home like that? You know what I'm talking about? It's like crazy. But I want to tell you guys, for parents, if, you, if you're a young parent, I just want to tell you, listen, raising kids is a walk in the park. I mean, it's Jurassic Park, but it's a walk in the park. <laughs> 
It does seem like there's large monsters chasing you sometimes. It's okay. It's, it's going to be worth it, I promise you. So, no, it is fun, though, but I tell you what, moms do so much that I decided to title this message called The Mother Load. Because you carry, mom, the mother load of the family. And that is a load. Let's not lie, okay? Guys, let's just admit right now that we are on our best parenting day, three notches below our wife's worst parenting day, right? I mean, it's just true that, that my wife is just simply a better parent than I am, period. I mean, I'm vaguely aware of the three people in my home. She knows where they're at at all times, whether they've eaten or not, what they need next. Like, she knows all that stuff. And I'm vaguely aware that they're there, right? And so it's amazing. I didn't realize how much of a caveman I was until I became a parent and realized that I'd just sit around and grunt. And that's what I do. And she knows all the details. And mom's just, there's something built in you to know what Johnny's doing and Sally's doing at all time and where they're at and what they're doing next. And so you're just so aware. It's amazing how moms have this sixth sense to know what's going on with their kids. And so mom, we're so grateful you do really carry the mother load. And so today I wanted to talk about the things that we can do for mom because mom does so much for us. So if you grab, if you'll grab your notes, I want to give you some things to write down because I speak about 350 words a minute with Gus up to 750. So here we go. So I want you to write a couple things down because I really believe this is gonna help you to appreciate and, and love on your mom. And so the first verse I wanna give you for the day on handling the mother load, how we can help our moms out, is Proverbs 31, 28. It says this, her children arise and call her blessed, her, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned. And oh, she has earned it, right, men? She has earned it. And let her work bring her praise at the city gates. Would you write this down? Number one is this, moms need appreciation and validation. We can talk about the most important jobs in the world all day long. We'd get in a big argument of what's most important. You know, we'd talk about athletes, and entertainers, and how they bring hope to the world, and, and they really encourage us, and people say, oh no, that's not nearly as important as government officials, because they help bring, you know, security to our nation, and then they lead and they direct us, and someone say, oh no, hold on, what about policemen, and what about first responders, because they keep us safe, and they watch over us. We could go on and on, but I'd say, hold on. None of them are possible without a mom. And so I really believe, mom, I think you got the most important job in the world. And we are so thankful for you today. It's really true. And so we just want to validate you, let you know how much we appreciate you. In fact, one of the things that we decided to do today was to give you a free gift. And so outside in the atrium, on your way out, we have a, a free t-shirt to give you today. And so please go by and get one of those. It says mom in many different words. And so check that out if you would on the way out and please pick it up before you leave. That is a gift from our church to you to say thank you for all that you do. Let's give it up for our moms real quick. We're so grateful for you, mom. We really are. I do want to stop and mention one other verse. So Philippians 1, 3 says, I thank my God every time I remember you. I know that today may be a tough day for you. Maybe today your mother is not with you anymore. And I just wanna tell you something, we're praying for you today. We know that can be a really tough thing, but I just wanna encourage you today, if that's you today, just to stop and just say, God, thank you for the great memories I have. Do you know the reason why that tear comes your eye right now? It's because your mom did a good job. You don't miss someone who didn't do a good job, but you miss someone greatly who, who did a great job. And so aren't we grateful for our moms that even have passed? We're so thankful for them too. And we just want you to know we pray for you. Because we know a day like this is not an easy day, especially if this is maybe your first couple of years without your mom. We just want you to know we love you. We're praying for you. And we just want you to know we're grateful for the years that you had your mom. And so moms need to be appreciated. They need to also be validated. Here's another thing mothers definitely need. Look at Psalm 78. It says, Yea, though, uh, yet though he did all this for them, they continued to test his patience. Oh, wow. What is one thing that moms always need? Moms need patience, right? They need patience or they're going to become a psychological patient, right? Either one, <laughs> one of those is going to happen. So yeah, moms need patience. It says in Ephesians 4 too, be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. And so moms really do need patience. My mother needed patience with me. I'm telling you, she says to this day that I had to go into the pastor to make up for my childhood. But I will tell you that my mom needed patience with me. My sister and I used to fight like cats and dogs. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? How many of you did that with a sibling, right? I mean, I fought. Oh, don't leave me hanging. How many of you guys fought with your... Come on. I know better than that. All right. And so the truth is I fought with my sister all the time. I was five years younger. She was five years older than me. And she always reminded me that I'm five years older. So now as we're older, I always tell her, I'm like, oh, no, you're five years older than me. You want to make sure I knew that. So I want to make sure you remember that. You're five whole years. So I was reminded of that now. But the, the thing is, is that she was older than me and she picked on me. Of course, I never did anything wrong. I mean, I was the baby. 
So I didn't do anything wrong. How many babies in the family do we have in here? Oh yeah, we know. There's, see, in every crowd, there's some perfect people. Hold your hand up. See, we've never done anything wrong. That's right. And so my sister used to pick on me all the time. And so one day my parents were gone. I've told this story before. Maybe you've heard it, but if you haven't, let me just give you a refresher because it's important in my life. And, and so I just want to take the moment to tell you that my sister tortured me. She really did. In fact, when I was a little kid, when my parents were gone one day, she said, hey, Billy, come watch this movie. She's the only one that can call me old Billy, by the way. That's the only one allowed. But she said, Billy, come here and watch this movie with me. And I'm like, okay, you know, this is cool. My older sister wants to spend time with me, right? Oh, no, that's a dead giveaway. You're getting set up right there, all right? So I plopped down on the couch, and she turns on the movie Friday the 13th. <laughs> I am a small child. I would be 6'4 if it wouldn't have stunned my growth. You know what I'm saying? So I watched this movie in between two pillows, scared to death, right? Watch this whole thing. And now it's in my mind. I'm so freaking out. She's like, hey, you got to go to bed now. I'm like, I don't want to go to bed. She's like, go to bed now. I'm like, I don't want to go to bed. I mean, I'm terrified. I just watched Friday the 13th. I'm a little kid, you know? And so, but, but is she passionate and compassionate for me? Oh, no, not at all. And so she just walks by my room while I'm laying in bed, scared with my little nightlight on. You know, got to have the nightlight. And so she, she just walks by my bedroom. This is what she does. Just like the movie, she just goes, ch 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 This is so mean. I'm like, this is crazy, right? And so I'm like, stop it, Pam, stop it, you know? And so I get up and I go to the bathroom. And when I do that, because remember the scene in the movie that like, if you saw it this years ago, but I mean, there's like Friday the 13th, part 26, Jason's great grand son comes and kills people. I don't know, it's crazy. But this is like the first one, right? And so remember the movie that like someone's underneath the guy's bed and I like stab him through the bed, you know? So I was thinking someone's underneath my bed, you know? Never dawned on me. There's no way anybody could get underneath my bed. I shoved so much junk in there, you know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> but I was really scared of that. So I'm checking underneath the bed. Well, my sister apparently knew I was checking underneath the bed and she remembers the part in the movie. And so I went to go to the bathroom. When I did, she slipped underneath my bed. <laughs> I told you she's cruel. She comes to church here. You need to get on to her about this today. So she had no idea one day that I'd have the mic. She had no idea. So. But she's underneath my bed. I come back and I'm laying down and I'm, I am a child just laying here innocently. And all she does is she just puts her hand on the mattress. I roll over and I see a hand on my mattress. I did what any small child would do. I just went, ah! I freak out, right? She starts laughing underneath the bed, and I realize it's her. And you know how kids can't control their anger, right? So I get so mad. I jump up on the bed, and my parents are kind of cheap. So we had those cheap beds, you know? So I'm like, I hate you. I hate you. And it's just hitting her in the face. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> my mom needed patience. That's all I'm trying to say. <laughs> the truth is, is that every mom needs patience. And I don't know if you know this, kids, but when you fight, it actually hurts your mom. I don't know if you knew that, but it's really true because moms need patience, but, but when you're fighting with each other, you start to devalue one another and you're devaluing her greatest value, which is you. And so when you fight, it's a big deal. Look at the scripture on this, by the way. It says, it says in Ephesians 4, 29, it says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up. If we could just remember this, even, even if you don't get along with your brother or sister, do this for your mom. Say, I'm gonna make a decision to not always cut down my brother, cut down my sister because it devalues my mom. And so it's worth it right there to say, you know what? It just, it's too painful for her to hear that. One day my, my sister and I were going at it and, uh, and we got along a lot of times, but sometimes we just didn't at all. And this particular day we were going at each other. And, and my mom, I remember she stopped and she broke down and she began to cry. She said, would you just please stop fighting? And when we saw her tears, we all stopped and we went like, oh, she's a human. <laughs> we were shocked. And everything kind of changed for Pam and I in that moment. We realized this is really lame. We're doing this to my mom. Like it just really hit us. I don't know what it was, but there was this humanity that we saw in her in this moment that we saw this strong woman just say, I just don't want to hear you fight anymore. And so I just want to encourage all the young people in the room. That's a big deal. When you choose to get along with your siblings, you, you're giving your parents, especially your mom, you're giving them a gift. You really are. And so I just want to encourage you to consider that. It says in Matthew 7, verse 12, do for others what you would have them like to do for you. Now, my boys think that means do it to them before they do it to you. That's not what it says. <laughs> it says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So we need to learn to, to, to show love towards one another and, and consider one another. Because you know what? Moms really do need patience. You know what, mom? Let me just tell you, let me give you a little rule here. You know, my kids are a little bit, a little bit older now. And so we've kind of chilled out a lot in our parenting. What I mean by that is like, we used to be stressed out about everything where I was like, oh, I just know we're gonna put them into counseling. You know, let me just save you some time. Of course you're gonna put them into counseling. We're all gonna do that. It's okay. That's a joke. I was just kidding. You're not gonna put them in counseling. <laughs> But here's the thing, we get stressed, don't we think, oh, I'm gonna say something wrong, I'm gonna do something wrong. But I just wanna encourage you, especially if you see them acting up somehow, 
every kid acts up. Just remember you did too. Remember that way back in the 1800s when we were kids, we acted up. <laughs> we did stupid stuff too. So let me give you a little rule. It's called the five by five rule. It's not, if it's not gonna matter in five years, don't spend five minutes being upset about it. Isn't that good? If it's not gonna matter in five years, don't spend five minutes being upset about it. It's true you need patience, so sometimes we just need to relax and realize it's okay. It's not a big deal, they broke a lamp, it'll be fine. It's not a big deal, they yelled at each other, kids do that. It's not a big deal, you know, they had a problem at school, every kid does. And so, just wanna encourage you, I'm not trying to blow off your situation, I just want you to know that sometimes we stress out over things that we don't need to stress out over. And so just as my kids are older now, I realize, I look back now and I'm like, you know, the stuff I used to get all upset about, we're just not that, it's just not that big of a deal anymore. And so I just wanna encourage you with that. Like the time Mason, when we were trying to, you know, potty train him and he would wear a diaper, but he discovered video games and he thought that the diaper meant he had an option, so he would just play the video game while pooping in his pants. So we're like, no, that's not how it works. <laughs> but boy, you, you should saw mom at the time, you're right? Jessica's like, no, you, I can't, he doesn't get it. And I'm like, baby, he, wanted, he does get it. He wanted to play the video game. That's what happened. And so, you know, I mean, he was little when he did this, like two, three years ago. I mean, it's not. <laughs> So anyways, but no, the truth is though, is that we get worried about our kid. Are they developing at the same pace as all the other kids and this and that? And the truth is mom, it's all going to even out. I just want, I just want to save you some time. And those moms that seem to be so ahead and they're like, my little Johnny was reading by age four, you know, give me a break. It's all going to even out. And so I just want to encourage you just to chill out with that stuff. How many of you guys know the super mom that always is comparing their kid to yours? You know, it's okay. Just go ahead and give your kid permission to beat them up. It's all right. Just let them know on the front end. You can hit them anytime you want. It's okay. But the truth is, though, is that we, we have this crazy competitive game going in, in parenting. Like, we have to be the greatest homeroom mom, and we have to always have this right, and, you know, always cut the crust off their sandwiches, and always do this and do that. And it's like, oh, man, you know what? Love them. Just love them and be there. If you'll pull that off, you're doing great. In fact, mom, let me just stop a moment and just tell you, you're doing better than you think you are. You really are. You're doing way better than you think you are. Just keep loving them. It's a game changer. Here's another thing moms need. Moms need wisdom. They do, right? Moms need validation, appreciation. They need patience and they need wisdom. It says in James 1, 5, but if any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He is generous and enjoys giving to all people. So he will give you wisdom. Maybe you've got a situation where you're like, I don't know what to do with my kid right now, right? We all face this, right? Maybe your kid brings home a friend and you're like, I don't want them hanging out with this person, right? Just something about you tells you this is not a good idea, right? Or, or your daughter brings home a boyfriend or your son brings home a girlfriend. You're like, oh, I don't know what to do here, right? And so just say, God, give me wisdom. Show me what to do. And so, and God will ultimately show you. It says in Colossians 2 verse 3, God has hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge in Christ. Seek the Lord. He will give you wisdom. So, you know, if your daughter has boys suddenly interested in her and you're really nervous about it, it's okay. You need to do what the great parent Charles Barkley said. I heard him say this, no lie. He said, I'm going to just kill the first one and word will get out. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> that is genius. I love that. So anyways, but no, it's really true. I want to encourage you, if you need wisdom, just ask God for it. We all need wisdom. In fact, you know, one of the things I, I like to do, this is, this is for real, this is what I do. Whenever I just feel a little bit lost in a decision, whether it's with my kids or anything else, I just had this little thing. Someone taught me this a long time ago. I've taught it here before, but I want to mention it again. You know, if Jesus died and rose again in three days, if he solved the problem of this, the world's sin, of all creation's sin in three days, don't you think that God could give you an answer in the next three days for whatever you're facing? So here's a prayer I pray. God, in the next three days, if Jesus could die and raise again, then Lord, I ask you to give me a breakthrough. Give me a knowledge. Show me what to do in the next three days. And you know what? God always answers that. He always gives me a clue, gives me some kind of sign or shows me what to do. Every time God lets something happen. Or maybe you've got a little sinking suspicion about your kid. You're like, I don't know what they're up to, but I know it's not any good. Just say, God, pray the prayer my mother prayed when I was little. And my, listen, this prayer works. She said, dear God, please help Billy always get caught. God answered that prayer <laughs> for my mom again and again and again. Right? The truth is, though, I could not get away with anything. I mean, first of all, I had a drug problem as a child. I was drugged to church every time the doors were open. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but I will tell you this, is that that was powerful because one of the things, listen, parents, you're smart right now if you've got your kids with you. You know why? Because this church is a third voice for you, right? You got mom's voice, you got dad's voice. You got the church's voice. It's a third voice giving influence because we all know there's plenty of worldly world voices talking to your kids right now, right? So wouldn't it be great if we had some more positive voices in your kids' life? This is why I love camp, children's camp, student camp. This is why I love student group, children's church. I mean, our kids' ministries here are outstanding. Can we just give it a moment right now to say thank you for all of our amazing volunteers? We have great Kids Unlimited. Ah, oh, amazing. 
Our kids' ministry is amazing. And guys, it's ministry. We're not babysitting your kids. We're ministering to your kids. I wanna encourage you to get them involved. It's incredible. You know one thing that my mom and dad did too, just wanna mention this, speaking about wisdom. You know, it's one thing, one of those impacting things you could ever do is take your kids and drop them off at children's church and in youth group. But there's only one way I know of to up the level above that to where it really sees some, they see something powerful. And that is for you to serve in the very children's church or youth group they're in. When they see you, they see a dad being spiritual, a mom being spiritual, and there's nothing more powerful. I grew up watching my, listen, when I went to Sunday school, it was my mom and my dad teaching me. When I remember going, going to, to camp, my mom was at camp serving. I mean, I, listen, I didn't learn the Bible at seminary. I, 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 it reaffirmed what I already knew, but most of the Bible that I learned was from my own mom in my backyard. My mom did this thing called Backyard Bible Club. I saw all my friends down the street receive Christ in my own backyard. And so if you wanna know, Pastor Bill, where do you get your evangelism? I got it from Ann Cornelius, that's where I got it. I got it from my mom. She's an evangelist. Just the other day, in fact, we were having dinner with, with my parents and, and my mom began to tell me about this, this man. She said, God just put in my heart and I just knew I had to go talk to him. She walked in and talked to a man who had cancer. She just said, I just have to tell you. And she meant it so sincerely, I loved it. She just said, I just have to ask you, do you know Jesus? You really need to know Jesus. You may be facing something, this may be it. I just wanna make sure you're going to heaven. I was like, my mom, it, after all these years, still is just wanting to make sure, do you know Jesus? Isn't that beautiful? I mean, it's so simple, but guys, it's so powerful. Our kids get our values, they really do. Whatever your values are, your kids are gonna get it, right? Look, they already have your values. They go to Waterburger all the time too. See, they have your values. They really do though, they get our values, don't they? And so I just wanna encourage you that. Moms need wisdom, it's a big deal. And by the way, mom, don't be so hard on yourself if your kids are acting up, it's okay, or if you don't feel like you have it all under control. Remember the movie E.T.? That mom didn't know she had an alien living in her home for three days. So mom, just okay, you're, you're doing better than you think. Just wanna encourage you with that, so okay. So here's another one, this is a big deal. Number four, moms need a break. Now I know all moms are gonna amen me on this one, right? You're like, amen, right? I'm gonna go full Madea on you on this one, right? I'm like, oh, you're not kidding. <laughs> It's true, right? Moms need a break, right? And so we just get worn out. Hey, before we go any further, please check out this video. I know, I should have warned you, I know. Time flies, doesn't it? It's crazy how time just flies by. My kids, I can't believe how old they are now, it's crazy. Did you say today, I was laying Mason on my chest. I mean, like, head to toe, he would just lay on my chest like this, and now he walks in, he's like, hey, Dad, what's up? <laughs> I'm like, what happened? Now he's huge all of a sudden, it's weird. I'm like, there's this grown man walking around, it's Calvin Klein model, walking around my house in his underwear. What's up, put some clothes on. Crazy. Him and Cole, they have muscle in places, they only have places. I'm like, how do you look like that? You can't be my DNA. What happened? <laughs> Crazy. So, anyways, it's true, they grow up so fast. You know, moms do need a break. You know, studies tell us, by the way, that, that moms need a break. That, that, that over and over again, all studies say moms are just tired, they're exhausted. They love their kids, but they're just worn out because they're carrying the mother load. The same studies tell us that the average dad says, I wish I could spend more time with my kids. Huh, I think I can figure out a solution here. <laughs> right? 
So dads, we can make a difference by saying, hey, honey, I'm going to take the kids for the day. Or even if you take, I'm going to take the kids for the next hour. That's a game changer. Honestly, just get them out of the house, take them with you, especially when they're younger. It's a big deal. Just get them away. You know, even right now, I mean, my youngest is 15. And so my, my time is really getting short. And so it's a big deal to me. So I'm always just saying, hey, all right, let's, let's go. Daddy, daughter, date. And this is just my time with Sophie. And we just have a great time together, just talking and just, you know, and, I, and if you're always saying, my kid won't talk. How many of you guys have this? My kid won't talk, right? Let me give you a little clue. You may want to write this down. This is something that really helps us. We just ask two questions. What was your high today? And what was your low today? It's a great one. And just what was your high? What was the best thing that happened today? And they're going to say, oh, uh, I sat by so-and-so in lunch. Okay, cool. And then you just, you just learn something. Okay, that, that person's important to him, right? And so what was your low today? Oh, I did bad on this grade. Or I, you know, someone got on me or what, I felt bad or, or someone hurt my feelings or whatever. You learn about your kids that way. It's a great time. I want to encourage you to do that. What's your high and what's your low? Just a simple little thing you can say just to foster a great conversation. And by the way, just to let you know, dads, you have no idea the game changer you are here. I'm mom, I know this is your day, but dad, you can help mom just by getting involved more. And even if you're not in their home anymore, dad, you can still help their mom. And so I want to encourage you to do that. Be involved in your kids' lives. Just because a divorce happened doesn't mean your parenting died. No, it doesn't work like that. Those kids need you, dad. You want to show some love to their mom? Be there for those kids. It's a game changer. Is that cool? Can we, can we just commit to that, Dad? Big deal. And I know it goes both ways. I know that. Before you see me an email, I know there's the opposite, too, of moms that kind of blow it off, and dads are taking care of the kids. I, I get it. It goes both ways nowadays. I understand that. But by and large, mom carries the load. And so we just want to encourage you again. Hey, can we just stop a moment real quick, speaking of that, and just, and just take a moment to thank God for single moms who are literally heroes, that they are able to do what they do. Incredible. Wow. That's amazing to me. I do not know how you do it. I, that's amazing to me. One time my kids were like, dad, what would you do if mom died? I'd be like, it'd be really sad me dropping you off at the hospital and leaving like that. But you know, I'd have to do it. <laughs> the truth is though, I mean, I do not know how you raise kids with, with a single parent home. Congra I mean, that, that's amazing. It's impressive. And we just want to honor you. It's just, it's, it's amazing. And so this is why, um, you know, that, that you always see moms honored so much on Mother's Day, because it's true. You do carry the mother low. We are so grateful for you. Moms need a break. Check out the verse. It says in Psalms 127.2, it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat, for God gives rest to his loved ones. So we need to learn to, to take a break, right? And my wife, I remember when the kids were little, she just couldn't turn it off. Could she, the mom mode, right? It would just kick in. And, and I know mom, you know what I'm talking about. So I remember laying in bed one night and I rolled over basically to make a move on my wife. I'm going to get a little personal here, right? So I rolled over and I'm like embracing my wife, kissing her. And she kind of stops and looks. I'm like, what? And she goes, I, I, did I pack a lunch for Cole? I can't remember. And I was like, seriously? In this moment, this is what you're thinking about? Don't lie, mom. You know you've been there. Don't lie. And so I'm telling, you got to learn to turn that off, right? And so, because you got to remember, you're also a wife, right? It's a big deal. And so, but, but even more important than just that, just to turn off the mom so you can just be you and just get a little time alone, a little time away. That's a really big deal. As my wife always says, you know, one thing you learn that you're a mother of little ones is when you learn you cannot even go to the bathroom alone. And so I was like, oh yeah, that's right, I remember that. So, and so the truth is, is that you do need to be able to turn it off sometimes. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 says, then Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Isn't that great? Jesus wants to give you real rest. So moms need a break. Hey, speaking of this, by the way, I'm really excited about this new series we're starting next week. It's called Running on Empty because we know you need a break. We want to help you fill up your tank. Check out this video. I relate to that? Oh yeah, we all can relate, right? So we're doing a mail out to our community, but we wanted to give you the extras. So would you pull this out real quick? I want to encourage you to take this. And uh, this is something we do as a church. Maybe you're just visiting with us today. We're so glad you're here, but this is something that's a part of who we are. I told you about my mom's evangelistic heart. Well, in that same uh, notion, we want to take a moment and pray that God would lay upon our hearts a friend 
or a family member, a coworker, or a neighbor that we can bring to church with us next week. Maybe you know someone who could just really use a series. And, and, and I don't mean that you go preach to them, go, hey, I know you're running empty, you need to come to the series. No, not like that. You just say, hey, you gotta come to my church. It's in a great series. I know it applies to me. It's called Running on Empty. You don't want to miss it and invite them to come to church. In fact, if you've been impressed today by maybe it's your first time, first time with us, then come back again. You only have to come once to be regular around here. So come on back. We'd love to have you join us again. But let's pray right now and ask God just to lay upon our hearts a friend that we can invite to bring to church with us next week. Is that cool? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the privilege, God, that we have to use our influence for positive things, Lord, to, to invite someone. Lord, we're so busy to call a friend and say, hey, there's a great deal on, on this or that at the mall. We're so fast to text someone or, or, or tweet about our favorite burger place. Lord, help us, God, to be social media evangelists. Lord, help us, God, instead of always praying about whether we're supposed to cross an ocean to be missionary, Lord, teach us now just to cross the street to be missionary and invite our neighbor to church. Thank you, God, that we can bring people. I pray, Spirit of God, that you would lay upon our hearts the name of someone specifically that we can bring to church with us this next week. In Jesus' name, amen. If God gave you the name of someone, would you just write that in a little white space and hand this to him this week and just say, I was thinking about you. There's a new series coming up. I think you'd really like my church. You gotta give it a shot. You'll love it. The preacher talks too fast. He's super ADD. Just come anyways. It's great. <laughs> Invite him to come to church with you. So, okay, back into the message. You know, running an empty starts next week. Don't miss that. You're gonna wanna be here. And by the way, sometimes when moms need a break, they literally just need a break. You, you may be breaking down physically. Like, mom, you can get sick. And with mom status, that doesn't really turn off anything, right? You're like, you're sick and you still gotta be a mom, right? That's kind of how that works. And so that's a big deal. In fact, I, I was talking to my wife and she told me this. She said, when a mom gets sick enough to need meds, they, the doctor should immediately give you tra tranquilizer darts also so you can shoot the kids with them too. <laughs> so then you can actually rest. I was like, that's really funny and also very disturbing, honey, that you bring that up. So anyways, okay. So the last thing that moms need, look at Luke chapter 10, verses 41. It says, but the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you were worried and upset over all these details. That sounds like a mom, doesn't it? Mary and Martha are busy preparing a dinner, but Martha is busy doing the dinner. Mary just sits down in front of Jesus and just says, I just wanna hear from you and talk with you. And, and just he, she just kind of gets lost in the world of Christ. Just, just her Lord was right in front of her. And she just kind of got lost in that moment. And so, and Martha's upset, like, Mary, we got things to do here. Come on, I'm trying to get this meal ready. What are you doing, right? And Jesus corrects her gently, but he still corrects her. My dear Martha, you're worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. What was Jesus saying? Jesus saying, hey, look, I know you're busy, but the thing that's the most important out of this whole meal you're preparing, Martha, is to make sure that the two of you and everyone else here knows who I am in your life. I mean, it, honestly, mom, as busy as you are, getting stuff ready for school, getting lunches packed, making sure the homework's done, making sure everything's done and make sure the grades are turned in for school, right? Because it's May and oh man, we gotta make sure we pass and all that, right? Making sure you're getting all those details done. The, the truth is the most important thing is really pretty simple. Are your kids honoring God, right? And so I just wanna mention this to all of us. Really, if you wanna know what mom really wants today, I can tell you, there's a reason why we have a high attendance on Mother's Day every year, <laughs> by the way. This is our third highest attendance weekend of the year other than Christmas Eve and Easter. And it's because we all go, mom, it's your day, what do you want? And she says, I just wanna be in church with the whole family. And so that's why you're here. <laughs> why is that? I'll tell you why right now. Number five, moms need to know that they and their family are at the Lord's feet. Moms need to know that they and their family are at the Lord's feet. Let me ask you a question. Let me just go straight for you. Uh, forgive me for just going for the juggler here, but I just wanna, I'm gonna go up in your grill for just a second. Let me just ask you a question, just point blank, if you don't mind. We've been having a lot of fun today, but let me just ask you this question. Are you causing your mom to be up at night worried? Is your mom nervously praying and carrying a burden because of you? Are your actions causing her to live in fear of what might happen to you? Is she been praying for you to come to the Lord or to come back to the Lord? The greatest gift you can give your mom today is to give your life to Christ. That's what she really wants. That's not why we do it. We do it because we recognize that moms know best and isn't it interesting that moms know best and they also want us to get right with the Lord? Apparently what's best is for us to get right with the Lord. So I just wanna encourage you today, if you've not given your life to Christ, you can receive him right now. You can come to him and just say, Jesus, I just need you. No matter what you've done, no matter how much you've blown, you may say, Pastor, you know, I've done so much, there's no way God can forgive me. Oh, oh yeah, he can. 
The walls didn't cave in when you came in because they would have caved in on me long before you. We've all done stuff that we're embarrassed of. No one, we're not going to play anyone's low light reel of all the things we did in the last year. Thank God, right? We're not going to play that. We don't have that, thank God, first of all. FBI has all that. You know that. So <laughs> instead, we get to come to God, and he gives us his grace through Jesus. This is why Jesus died for our sins. He paid the price for your sin and for mine. Now he waits for us to simply come to him. Now, receiving Christ, we're not going to ask you to join the church to do that. We're not going to ask you also, because some people kind of have a hang-up, like, oh, I don't want to become a Christian because then I have to act like my weird aunt. No, you don't. No, you don't. Just whatever weird Christian family member you have, no one's asking you to get weird like them. Please do not base your faith on the weirdest, worst examples we know. We're simply asking you to say, Jesus, I, I need you, I realize that, and I want to know you. You see, God prepared a way for you to get to him, and it's through his son. The only way to get to heaven, in fact, the Bible's pretty clear, is through Jesus Christ himself. And so it's not whether you're good or bad. I don't know if you knew that, because sometimes you say, oh, if I were to die tonight, how do I know to go to heaven? Oh, I'm a pretty good guy, I'm a pretty good girl. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says either be perfect, there's two ways to get into heaven. Either you're perfect and sinless, or you get in on someone else's track record that is perfect and sinless. I don't know about you, but I blew that a long time ago, so I can get in on Jesus' perfect record. He gave his life for you and me. Would you pray this prayer with me? You, we're just going to pray this across all of our campuses right now. If you've never received Christ, pray this prayer with us today. You can just say, Dear Jesus, I realize I need you. I believe you died on the cross for me. You paid the price for my sin. And you rose again. I believe that. And I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I repent of my sins. I put you in first place. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. In your name we pray, amen. Isn't God good? His word is so true.